So here's the Cisco file. So then right now, we need to run a linear regression with the X axis as the time, which we have in row number one, and the Y axis as the product sales, which is row number six. Well, to do it, step number one, you need to transpose this one from a horizontal to a vertical. Otherwise, it doesn't work. So you need to do a transposing. So then the way to do it is, I have done it in advance here. So then now you put the time and then you hit the transpose command. So let me do it one more time here. So you select the cell that you like to transpose. So C1 all the way to the end, you do control C. And then here going to the time underneath the time, you do home, paste, transpose, okay? Home paste, paste special transpose. You do the same thing because now we are looking at row number six, okay? Now we are just looking at row number six. So therefore you also do the transpose. So then what I do is that going to C6, control shift right, so select everything, control C. And then here I simply goes to the next cell and paste special transpose. So to run a linear regression as what we have done, which is going to data, data analysis, under regression, the regression would be Y axis would be the product sales, the X axis, would be the time, okay? Trying to use the time to predict and the label and then let me output, the output range would be, let me just overlap what I had done in the past. Okay, so BI1. So then now there is a few cells that you need to pay attention. The first one is the P value of the slope. So the P value of the slope in this case is less than 5%, okay? So therefore that means that it is legitimate. So that is uh, predictable. So time is relevant. Then the next one that you need to look at is the R square. So in this case, the R square would be 11%. So that means you are capturing 11% of the phenomenon. So then in order to predict, you have the time and the intercept, time and intercept. So if I have to write out the regression formula, that would be product sales equals to minus 105.940 plus 57.057 multiplied by the time. Okay, so let's say right now we like to predict for the next time. So then the next time that I have is 2021.5. 2021.5 because my data only go until AV, column AV. So then for 2021.5, so product sales equals to the intercept plus the slope multiplied by 2021.5. So therefore, this is predicted product sales at 2021.5. That would be the predicted cells. Well, as you can see, that is quite a tedious process because you have to do the transpose and then you have to do it line by line. So Excel actually have a quick way to help you to do linear regression, which I have in column BA to BD. So then let me show you the formula, okay? So what we have done corresponds to this four cell. First, the R square, okay, the R square here, so which we have is 0.11449. So then if you like to have the R square, the command is equals to RSQ, RSQ. And then you highlight your Y axis, your Y axis. And then you highlight your 
x-axis. So in this case, that would be 0.11, okay, r squared. So then the next one that you like to select is the p-value. The p-value in this case, that takes a long command, okay? So let me explain this command. So the command is called F distribution, okay? So F distribution, and then you have 46 minus two. So what is 46 minus two? We have 46 data points, 46 data points. And then two, that means we have a two dimension, a two dimension graph. 46 minus two, and then you multiply by the R square, divide by one minus R square. Okay, R square divided by one minus R square, one. This one means that you have one X axis, one X axis. And then the last one is the degree of freedom. So once again, 46, which means you have 46 data point. And then two, that means it's a two dimension graph. Let me give you an example. Let's say right now, not only using the time, but then you like to predict with time and the GDP. Okay, so you have two X axis. X1 axis, which is the time. X2 axis would be the GDP value. So therefore you have 46 data point, then you have a 3D graph. So therefore 46 minus three, okay, because you have two X axis and one Y axis. Okay, 46 minus three. So here stays the same. This number one now becomes two because you have two X axis, which are the time and the GDP. And the last command would be 46 minus three because now you have three dimension graph. Okay, so that is how you interpret 46 minus two and also 46 minus two and the one here. So the next is to find out the intercepts, okay? The intercept value, basically you have the X axis and the Y axis, X axis and the Y axis. The X axis in this case is C1 to AV1, while the Y axis would be the product that you're trying to, pre uh, trying to predict slope okay the slope would be the slope command okay slope so on and so forth and then so you would notice that actually what you have in the linear regression and also if you do this it's exactly the same so here 0.114 here is also 0.114 the p value is 0 0.0214 here the value p uh, p value is 0 0.0214 and then here is minus 105. We also have minus 105 and the time as well. So therefore both are identical. So then now it allows you to copy and paste really easily. Okay, so what you need to do is that you copy and paste to all the red cell. Okay, so we have all the red cell here. Then you copy and paste, 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 paste everything. Okay or the red cell. Remember that the black cell are the calculation. The red cell are your raw data. So then the predicted value depends on the P value. If the P value is less than 5%, that means it is statistically significant. So the regression line is good. However, if the p-value is greater than 5%, so let's say for this case, the p-value is greater than 5%, okay, so I use uh, like, a, so let's say a green here, so that is greater than 5%, so then that is not good. So in that case, the regression line is not reasonable, so therefore you simply use an average command to approximate the next quarter cell. Rather than using the regression line, you use the average command. So therefore, if you look at the cell AX6, AX6 that consists of an if statement. 
the if statement, it looks at BB6 less than 5%. So that means checking. If the P value is less than 5%, then it used the regression line formula. So in this case, the regression line formula is intersect plus slope multiplied by the time, which is 2021.5, the quarter two that you try to predict. However, if BB6 is greater than 5%, that means the regression line is not valid. Then you simply take the average, okay? The average of all the past data, where your past data are collected in C6 all the way to AV6. So that would be the if statement. So then you copy this if statement in all, like so here, and here, okay, so that is an if statement. The next one is also if statement. Then this row number eight is simply the sum of the two because the total net cell equals to the product cell plus the surface cells. Then you also copy the if statement here, the if statement here, then the total cost of cells, once again, is the sum of the two. And then the gross margin is simply the difference between total sales minus the total cost of sales. Then you also copy the if statement at these five places. Then the operating expense is simply the sum of these five operating expense. Then the operating income is the difference between the gross margin minus the total operating expense. Then you have the if statement for the interest income, interest expense, and also the other income. Your total interest and other income net is simply the sum of the three. Then you have here the income before the income tax would be the operating income plus other interest income. The provision for the income tax, once again, is a, like a, a if statement, then at the end of the day, the net income is the difference between the income before provision for income tax minus the provision for income tax. So that is the meaning of this Excel file.